Can light lead you to a lighter, brighter, more energised life? Stay tuned to find out. This is Tony Winyard welcoming you to an illuminating episode guaranteed to shine a light on improving your health and well-being. My very special guest today is Wes Pfeiffer, an expert on harnessing the power of red and near-infrared light to give our bodies an energising boost. If you think light is only good for helping you see, think again. We'll be delving into the science showing how red light therapy could be the missing link in your health and performance, reducing inflammation, accelerating recovery, stimulating mitochondria and more. Wes will help cut through the fuzzy misconceptions around red light and ensure you avoid any dodgy products. You'll also get practical tips on soaking up more natural sunlight and creating healthy habits at home. I'm sure you'll be dazzled and motivated to take control of light for whole body benefits. Get ready to flip the switch on feeling lighter and brighter. And please do leave your enlightened comments on YouTube after tuning in. Now let's shine a light on Living Proactively. Welcome to the Art of Living Proactively. My guest today, Wes Feifner. How you doing, Wes? Good, Tony. How are you? I'm doing well. And we're in California today. That's right. That's bit, right. Sunny California. Bit of California love. Good to see. So, Wes is, works for a company called Juve, and they do red light therapy. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people listening probably have no idea what red light therapy is. And equally, maybe a number of people... They've heard of it, but they're not really sure. So we're going to dig in to find it. We're going to find out a lot more about what it is and clear up all the sort of myths and so on. But let's start off with what are your thoughts around being proactive? I think when I think of being proactive, um, I think of a lot of things of like self-discovery. And when we get into this topic of health, since the launch of social media of the last decade or two, we've really seen a lot of people gravitating towards influencers and seeing people like, what are they mixing into their routine? What works? And some people being so definitive on this is the answer to health and health's very fluid. It's always moving. And so what I, how I look at is really like self-discovery and the more things you can implement and try, the more times you'll fail, but the more times you'll find answers. And so I think that's one of the the best ways to be proactive with your health is try different things. Don't stay in a rut. If it's not working for you, change it. Don't keep going on. If something's not working, change it. Change up your routine. Change up your diet. See what works for you. But ultimately, it's about self-discovery and what works best for you. Because in a lot of time, Tony, how you live your life and how you do your daily routine, that may not work for me. And now we know there's science to that, right? Some people have different circadian rhythms where they're more awake in the morning, right? As soon as they're out of bed, they're ready to go. Their, their brain is alert, like they are ready to chomp at the bit for the day. Some people, they don't hit that till two in the afternoon, one in the afternoon, right? Those are more your night owls. We used to look at those people as being really lazy. They just know they don't get enough sleep. But if you paid attention to new science that's coming out about circadian rhythm and specifically sleep, some people are wired to where their brain doesn't turn on until the afternoon, you know, Uh, going into what works best for you and me. Like there's a lot of people that'll say, you got to start at 5 a.m. in the morning and do this and that. No, I'm not a believer in that. I'm a believer in find out what works best for you, try different things, fail and and learn from it. And I think that's the best way you're going to figure out how you as a person, your body responds and how and how you can, you know, really thrive in the world and for your health. So that's how I look at being proactive is really a lot of self discovery. Yeah, I agree completely with everything you've just and, and I'm wondering as you were speaking, how does red light therapy fit into to be proactive? What? Well, maybe explain first what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's I'll I'll be the first one. If you're listening to this for the first time and you're hearing about red light therapy or light therapy, most likely you've seen it online or somewhat. But I was a super big skeptic when I first saw red light therapy. I was like, I've never seen anybody talk about this before. And this was back in. Oh, geez, before the company had been started. So 2015, so nobody was talking about red light. It, it, the only place you would have seen red light would have been like esthetician offices, you know, skincare stuff. Um, there's been a lot of science behind skincare with red light therapy. Um, so you would have seen it in that regard, maybe a face mask, but still like most people's knowledge of light 
very little. Most people looked at it as just something that can help you see. But when, uh, when, you, when you break down light, it's energy. And most of us growing up, how we learned about light is it just helps us see, right? But when you actually start to look at light from a scientific perspective, it's energy. And the sun, which is our primary source of light, and really in this universe that we live in, light is powering everything. It gives the earth heat, it, the plant and, and everything respond to those wavelengths of light that hit the earth and grow, provides energy. And us as humans, we really aren't any different. Um, a lot of people know the benefit of, of the sun from a vitamin D perspective, um, but the sun is full spectrum and it's giving off thousands of different wavelengths. And one of those just happens to be red and near infrared. And what those wavelengths have been shown to do through, through countless clinical studies is it actually helps our cells function properly. And so it, it helps them produce more energy uh, known as ATP. And so it stimulates um, an organelle in the cell called mitochondria, which is which helps produce uh, energy for the body. And so in, in a, uh, in, to button that up is red and near infrared light is specific wavelengths that your body can absorb that allows the cells to function at, or at their peak and produce energy so the body can thrive. And that's just really our makeup. When you look at a lot of things of how we get sick, um, when we're not doing well, our cells are typically struggling. Um, and so red light therapy is a way to help support healthy cellular function. So on a bright sunny day, if someone's on a, lying on a beach, for example, on a bright sunny day, how much red light would they be taking in, for example? Well, that, that's a tough question because the sun goes through seasons, right? As the earth rotates, we get further away from the sun. And so that's why we experience different, different seasons, right? We got summer, fall, winter, spring. And during the, during the fall and winter, the sun's further away, right? It's still going to be a sunny day. It can be a sunny day in, in the fall, but the sun's impact is much less. Uh, that's because the earth is further away. Um, and so it's a tough question to ask specifically, like what the time of day, because there's there can be clouds, um, et cetera. But um, typically at peak day, that's when the sun's going to be at its at its strongest. And if you've noticed, most people have during a sunrise and sunset, what colors are primarily active from the sun? It's red and near infrared. And because red is the longest color visible wavelength, that's the only thing that's making it through the atmosphere. That's why you typically see like a red, orangey tint every sunrise and sunset because those other wavelengths are not re reaching the surface of the earth this as well as red light therapy something else that many people have been talking about in the last couple of years is red light saunas and so on and but they're not the same mm -hmm. thing are they no they're not and they're actually quite different so you will see some people will incorporate in saunas like red light like lighting above them on um, like a fixture and that's really more light to help with mood um, different colors to help with mood but saunas and a lot of people know them um, there's different types of saunas but the one you're referring to is like an infrared sauna is that the same thing as red light and they're actually very when you look at infrared specifically there there's three types there's near mid and far and near infrared is what you typically see in in red light panels um, or red light beds it's a shorter wavelength that's just after red light therapy when you're looking at the light spectrum and then you got mid and far infrared is a much longer wavelength and it's got a lot of heat to it and so what happens is those wavelengths um, in a sauna far infrared they get uh, they your body absorbs them and it's primarily affecting the water in your tissues and so it's almost like cooking you from the inside out so it's designed to generate heat far infrared saunas actually heat your body so you activate heat shock proteins you start to um, you start to sweat detox lots of benefits for far infrared but when you're looking at it as how are they different far infrared provides heat and stress on the body and then near infrared is a minor little stress that you typically won't even feel um, it's generating energy so you got red and near infrared light therapy providing energy and then a far infrared sauna um, it's putting stress on the body to help detox so we actually recommend a lot of people use both the therapies together and by doing a sauna session first and then following up like a red light therapy session after because your body's going through a workout in a sauna. You know, it's putting a lot of stress on. If anybody's actually done a good sauna session, whether it's a, a dry sauna, a wet sauna, or a far infrared sauna, you feel you, know, you feel good after, but your body definitely went through a workout, right? And because it's, it's fighting to keep its core temperature stable. That's why you're sweating, et cetera. Um, great, they're great therapies to use in conjunction with one another, doing a sauna, and then we like to use, use Juve 
red light therapy after. So people are probably wondering, well, how would you use that juve? I mean, what is it that you would do? Are you holding something or how does it work? Uh, another great question. So we, when we looked at first creating Juve, um, there was a lot of targeted devices out there. And so what I mean by targeted is people were wearing face masks. They had more handheld stuff, whether, you know, to treat different areas around your body. And when you look at the clinical data, there is a tremendous amount. And for various areas around your body, or for treating skin uh, issues, for treating joint pain and inflammation, treating wounds. Now you're seeing stuff for eyes, you're seeing stuff for hair, you're seeing stuff for muscle recovery. It's just all around the body. There's where, where, you, when, where you shine this light on the body, those cells respond really well. Um, and so we looked at that and thought, well, no one's really, no one's really providing solutions to treat your entire body. And so that's really the, you know, the start of where Juve developed these panels. And so there, we have red light panels that you can put in your home that can treat sections of your body, or if you're going to create a bigger setup, can treat your entire body. And you would stand at a distance 12 to uh, or 16 to 24 inches away um, and just expose as much skin as you can and let your body absorb that light energy. And so that's what kind of separated you. We were the first company to launch this panel concept. Um, and from that, it's really taken off. And a lot of people are benefiting from putting this healthy light uh, in their home and having access to it on, on a daily basis. And so how would, would you just sit in front of it or how, I mean, how long would you do that? Yeah. So treatments are typically 10, uh, 10 to 20 minutes per treatment area. So let's, I'm, I'm in front of a device, you know, we have a modular system and so you can, um, you can buy one panel and you can, or you can connect them to another panel and ideally treat your entire body. And it's 10 to 20 minutes per treatment or so you just need to expose similar how I'm sure most folks have experienced a tanning bed, right? You'd go into a tanning bed, set the timer and just expose your skin and relax. Um, and your body actually absorbs this light and it penetrates fairly deep in, in, into the body, especially near infrared. Um, and that's where you'll see the differences of red and near infrared. Red light is primarily absorbed by the outer tissues like your skin. Um, and then near infrared penetrates a little deeper and can actually stimulate uh, muscles, um, can provide healing on, on, on a deeper level. So both wavelengths are very good in conjunction with one another. And so that's typically how a treatment is, just exposing your skin and letting, letting your body absorb the light. So when you say, for example, it helps with inflammation. So I mean, inflammation is quite important for the body, isn't it? We don't necessarily mm -hmm. want to stop inflammation. So, I mean, so how does it help inflammation? I think, Tony, that's a, such a critical question because you see that a lot. And we actually have a great article on our site that's called Less Ice, More Light. And in fact, most people are starting to pull it back as far as the information out there of using ice. And a, a big thing there is what does ice do? Ice cuts off blood flow. And so when it cuts off blood flow, your, your body's not able to really form that bubble around that injury. And because that's essentially what an inflammation is. It's like a, it's like an internal bandaid. Um, when you cut off the blood flow, you can reduce the inflammation, but does that accelerate the recovery? Because you actually want that brief acute response of, a, of inflammation. Um, and what, so what red light therapy does is part of the mechanism of action is there's a brief uptick in nitric oxide released into the bloodstream. So you actually see an increase in blood flow. So what it happens is it so your question, does it inflammation, right? Is it stopping it or is it just accelerating? It? And it's really just accelerating that process naturally, right? It's getting more blood flow there, more, more of the blood, uh, like the white blood cells, et cetera, that, that repair damaged tissues. It's getting more of that there. And it's also helping those cells that are under oxidative stress in that area. Let's say an example, I went and did like a, a leg workout and I did a bunch of squats. I did a bunch of lunges. My legs are shot, right? They're going to, you're going to fill up with lactic acid. They're going to fill up with brief acute inflammation. Red and near infrared helps that recover just faster by healing those cells and giving those cells, shifting them from oxidative stress back to homeostasis. And then you see a brief uptick in, in, in ATP. Um, and so it just accelerates that, pro na that natural process faster. Right. And so what about then if someone has, say, chronic inflammation? That's a good question. Uh, that's a good question. There's a very, very good meta-analysis on um, the different mechanisms of red and near infrared for for inflammation. So it's probably, that's, that's a tough question to answer because the body is so complex and there's many different issues of maybe why somebody's dealing with, 
with chronic inflammation, right? Is it arthritis? Is it, uh, is it, you know, is it fibromyalgia? What are, is it, their, is it diet related? Is it some sort of a supplement they're taking? Is it a living environment? Is it, is it mold or is it who, what, what is causing that? So it's always tough to say what it could do for chronic. But if you look at what just light does in general, it's providing your cells with energy to function at, as they're designed to. So anytime you can support healthy cellular function, you're giving your body the tools, just like you would want to take vitamins or eat a good, good, healthy diet. You're giving your body the tools for it to run as it wants to run. And anytime you can set yourself up for that, like we're, like we're talking about being proactive, you're going you're gonna to build a stronger body that's better prepared to take on you know, the stresses of the day. Or, you know, or maybe, uh, maybe you're supported, you're, you're sick with something, or, you know, it's like if I was to roll an ankle, like I'm going to, I'm going to deliver light to that uh, damaged area to give my body the tools to help repair itself. And so as far as the actual panels, I mean, you, you mentioned it's modular and so on, and there seems to be quite a few different companies selling, or they've got various types of red light therapy panels, I guess. Is there much difference between them? I know there's lots of stuff coming out of China, for example. Yeah, there is. That that really goes into to any type when you see a successful uh, product category be developed, you always see a lot of fast followers and a lot of, you'll, you'll see a lot of, let's say, janky products on Amazon, right? It just, it goes with the industry. I mean, if, if anybody can remember when massage gun came onto the market, like now there's probably a thousand of them on Amazon, right? And so one, we're the original creator of the red light panel per se. Um, and so we work with a lot of individuals in, in the research space, and we've really designed our products to give the body a safe dosage of light. You see a lot of products out there saying, oh, we deliver more power, or we're this. Really, there's no validation for that, especially with, you know, you'll see companies delivering multiple different wavelengths of red light, but your body responds the same to any different of, of red wavelength that's so close it's, it's not really making a significant difference. So you see a lot of smoke and mirrors in the red light industry with companies trying to pull a leg up. And the other part is um, what separates you is we actually design and develop our own products. Most of what you'll see on the market is just white labeled um, products. Like you mentioned, China, they really don't, they really don't own those products or, or have designed them. They don't really know what's in those products. Um, when you're creating a product, especially here in the States, you have to follow fairly strict guidelines because it is a class two medical device. The differences with our product is the quality components are just a higher standard. Um, we've actually gone through independent safety testing um, to make sure it's safe and effective for folks at home. And so the components are just that much on a higher level um, and we're delivering a safe dosage. You wouldn't want to just expose your body to anything out there, especially naked, not knowing if it's been safety tested, different things like that. So we take a lot of pride in really creating a safe, effective device and creating and designing our own products and, and not just simply buying something off Alibaba as an example, because you just see that now nowadays folks just in some countries, especially, you know, you mentioned China that kind of flood the market with copycat devices. And so we do everything, we, we do everything the right way and really try to create a great product for consumers that, that can really affect their health in a positive way. So what could be a potential danger of someone buying a product from someone they there's no the manufacturer isn't established so what could be a possible danger from using a product like that Well there could be many things one it, it could it could shock them if it's not it, how safe it is has it been tested to to go through all of that stuff um another one could be you know, maybe you're delivering way too high of power to your body in the the photomedicine research there's a known effect called the biphasic dosage response and it's when you actually deliver too much light too fast can actually cause damage to your cells. It's almost like an overload. Um, and so you want to make sure the dosage is, is set and effective. Uh, but if you deliver too much light, for example, so there's lots of products out there too that don't deliver enough light. So if you've ever seen something like a little flashlight, something that, like that's not going to do, do the job. You need to make sure it's delivering a high enough dosage to stimulate the cells, but, uh, but not too high to where you're going to cause damage to the cells. So there, I mean, there's many things, especially if you're not like with our products, we provide eye protection. Our, our, that we've gone through testing that our glasses, they do block that certain wavelength of light that there is a potential to maybe overheat uh, the tissues in your eyes. And so there's just many little nuances like that to where, you know, you're going to be exposing your body no different than your t if you're to take a supplement, like you're exposing this to your body and radiating light on it. You want to make sure it's it, it, it's been 
been safety tested. And so are there areas of the body you need to be more careful with then? It's, I mean, obviously you just mentioned the eyes. Is there any other areas? Not really. In fact, there's been pretty cool research. We've participated in some small pilot studies uh, showing benefits for hormones. So like another sensitive area you would think like for a male is uh, the testes or the private area. And actually, there's some science in animal models, but also we've seen it in some, some research we've participated in with, with an increase in, in testosterone. Um, it's not anything that we can make like a, a strong claim about, but it just goes down to that mechanism of red and near infrared light stimulates healthy cellular function. Well, you know, there's mitochondria in, in the testes, right? The Leydig cells. There's cells there that, that require energy, right, to create to create testosterone, different things of those functions. Um, and when they receive energy, they can work properly. And so that's what's really fascinating about it is what we've seen. There isn't any, any sensitive areas. Now, if you're delivering too high of a power down there, you <laughs> that may not be such a pleasant response. But uh, but yeah, so that, that could potentially be something. But in general, um, when you're delivering a safe dosage, you can radiate the entire body. You mentioned about it increases nitric oxide. So that suggests to me, I guess it would be good for people with like asthma and respiratory issues. It could be. I mean, it's we're always blown away with when somebody buys one of our products and they start using it, they may have bought it for X, but then all of a sudden they, they'll leave a review or they'll, they'll send an email and be like, hey, I'm experiencing this type of a benefit. Is that normal? One of them, one of them uh, that I can think of that's on the top of my head is, there was this gal who was doing a review of her product. I can't remember what media outlet she wrote for, but she has, I think it's where, is it, is it Bell's palsy where some of your face can go numb? Is that the right? I can't remember. Um, anybody that that's listening can fact check that, but there is a, an effect that with, I think it's a Bell's palsy that where half of your face can go like numb. You just don't, you don't, you can't feel anything. And when she started using the red light, she was using it for skin benefits her Bell's palsy cleared up 98% is what she what she stated to us in an email. And she's like, is that normal? Can that happen? And I don't mean we we don't know, but like apparently that's happening. And so that's where the science is with red and near infrared light now. It's very fluid and it's very evolving. Most of what we're able to say as far as a benefit is it, it can mildly reduce like pain and inflammation, relax sore muscles, and then there's skin health benefits. But it's starting to evolve like way beyond that, and which is very exciting. It's a very exciting field to be in. You no, know, and so we're seeing that in the literature be proved out. There was, I know I mentioned the eyes, but there was a very exciting study just a, just about a year and a half ago where they were using red light, not the near infrared light, red light, and it was actually help improving vision for folks forty and uh, and over. Just a three minute treatment in the morning, they were they noted significant benefits in, in improving their vision. And then one of them just released this month, very exciting study, folks that did a red light treatment after eating it reduced blood glucose levels up to 28% versus, versus the placebo. Um, and so that's another one where you're scratching your head and you're like, how could it do that? But that kind of goes into the theme of what we're talking about of how it just, your body takes that energy and it just starts functioning a, as it's designed to, right? And so we don't know the limits of it yet, which is very exciting. With a, a regular sauna, I mean, they say that if you can get accumulated 60 minutes a week, there's like enormous benefit. So is it something similar? You would need so many minutes per week, for example? Or? Great, great question. So typically we, we look at daily treatments, but most of the research that we've personally participated in, we saw jumps at six weeks, 12 weeks. So it's something you need to be doing on a regular basis. It's not a super immediate effect. Some people will see immediate effects of maybe reducing pain in a joint because of that increase in blood flow. Different things like that or short-term muscle recovery. Hey, I feel a little bit less sore after this. But I think some of those really long-term benefits for, that really can improve the core of your health, it's probably going to be somewhere long in, in, into the couple weeks. And, and no different than when you're introducing like a new supplement, maybe a multivitamin or maybe something. You're probably not going to see the greatest benefit the first time you take that supplement, but maybe when you're looking at it over several weeks. Um, but that's not to say someone couldn't see benefits right away. You know, because again, all of our bodies are different. Maybe we're dealing with different stresses. You know, some are, are super big into fitness, right? They put a lot of stress on their body. So implementing it right away like that, they could see a difference in their, in, in their recovery. So that's something we see as an example with a professional sports team that, that we've partnered with uh, the San Francisco 49ers. So they're an NFL team, right? And anybody that knows or can football 
it's a brutal sport, right? Those guys are running into each other like missiles. And so they're, it's not uncommon for an NFL player to be like after a game, they feel like they went through a car accident. Um, and so those like player, you know, individuals like those who are putting a lot of stress on their body, they can see the benefits of it fairly quickly right after a game um, and using it several days after a game, et cetera. So it depends on individual base, but from, from the research we've participated in, usually takes a couple of weeks. And is there, have you noticed any difference whether, is it better to, for example, to use it in the morning, afternoon, evening, or yeah, I guess it, again, it depends on the person. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the person, depends how they're wired. We'll work split from, from a customer base. Some customer, you know, that's part of their morning ritual, right? They get up. Um, first thing they do is start like a meditation routine, breathwork r- routine. It really helps wake them up. It helps them give them some clarity, energy throughout the day. Um, and that's one thing I personally do. I love to use it right in the morning. And I noticed firsthand, I know everyone can probably relate to this, that time where you wake up some of those mornings and you just feel that brain fog. It's like you just woke up out of a deep sleep. Like maybe suddenly, maybe your alarm went off or something like that. And you just feel lethargic, right? Um, for whatever reason, I, I, right after a treatment I do in the morning, um, that's like on. Like I just don't experience that brain fog in the morning or that, you know, that, that haziness that can be there. Um, and so a lot of people like it in the morning, me personally. Um, but then there's a large group that they like doing it at night. It really helps relax them. Well, most likely shifts them into like a parasympathetic state. And a lot of people will just rave about how they get great sleep and they when they start using it at night before bed as a wind down tool, et cetera. So it's kind of split there. And there's also a cool feature on our products that you can use through our app. We call ambient mode. And it's not delivering a uh, like a clinical dosage. It's just delivering red ambient lighting. And so a lot of people will turn that setting on because at night, red is not very intrusive on your circadian rhythm. So it really doesn't halt melatonin production. Um, and so it's a great wind down tool to maybe put on in the bedroom, right? Maybe you're going to read a book or you're going to you're going to do something as a wind down routine. Turn off all the blue light. It can be a great way to help and do sleep just from that ambient lighting perspective. Split there and really uh, depends on what works best for you. And it sounds, well, I, something that went through my mind as you were saying that, it sounds like something that would be great to pair it together with, say, meditation, doing it at the same time as you meditate. Yeah, we see that a lot. We see a lot of people starting their day with that or their nighttime routine with that of breath work and meditation and just I think we live in such a world now that we're so overstimulated. Um, and if you think about us as humans right now, we've never had more information than any other humans on earth, and we've never had it that fast. Well, I mean, you can learn something with an instant, and your brain can be constantly bouncing. I mean, how many of us, I'm sure, like I'm going to raise my hand, how many of us have, well, they maybe stumble across something, they've been scrolling, and then they're off learning about that, and then they're clicking here, and then they're doing, uh, it's like, boom. But think about your brain, it's going, it's like bouncing, like, boom. And that's stimulation, right? And it can be very hard to turn that off and then, and then go to bed. Um, and so I think when, you're, when we're talking about something that can help relax you, calm you, I think that's a big thing in our day and age. When you look at, um, you look at just the average, and this is the States, so I imagine it's probably the same in, in the UK, but um, 100 years ago, the average American slept about nine and a half hours. And now um, we're under six, the average American. So that's just significantly different in a 100-year span we're sleeping over two hours less a night. And just that alone, like getting a good night's sleep versus not getting a good night's sleep, like you're not going to function the next day. Yeah, I think, you know, back to your question, like it'd be really good to pair it with things that can calm you, not stimulating, relaxing. Um, So definitely great to pair with breath work or meditation. Early on, you talked about how it, stimulates the production of mitochondria and ATP and everything. And I wondered, something that went through my mind as you were saying that, does it, when you do hormesis and cold showers and saunas and so on, you're accumulating, you're building up more brown fat. Does this have anything to do with that whole sort of process? I, there, You'll see some folks promoting a lot of, I know you're not specifically talking about fat loss, but... There are some people that are promoting like high powered lasers of almost stimulating fat loss or burning fat loss. Not really with our products. You're going to, you're going to see that. Now I will put a caveat in there that, um, and something we've seen through a research partner of ours, and the study hasn't been published yet, but it helped assist 
in, in, in someone trying to lose weight uh, with exercise and diet. Because if, we, if, you, uh, if you go back to that study that I mentioned about blood glucose and how it lowered at 28%. So if it has the ability to help your metabolic system and that function better, um, it could help support weight loss, different things. So it's tough to put like a, an actual yes or no on, on some of the stuff with like fat burning, et cetera. Um, because it's just so overall supporting with, with your body in nearly every function. And that's why we really encourage full body um, to help try to get that systemic benefits. Are, are there any myths about red light therapy that you'd like to squash? Yeah, I'd say one of the bigger myths out there is it like, is it snake oil? And no, it's, it's definitely not. I mean, there's a lot of scientific literature now. I mean, well, you can go to PubMed right now and just type in red light therapy and just type in the year 2023. You're going to see hundreds of studies. Oh, it, it's so from that standpoint, like it's really, it's pretty solidified that it, there is lots and lots of, of benefits to it. Wavelengths do matter. Uh, the other thing I would probably say is it's you can't get these benefits from you know, draping yourself in red Christmas lights. It's just that's not going to be a high enough power. So power matters. And the science is legitimate when, when you're looking at what this therapy can do for folks. And so when if people are considering buying these products, I mean, obviously they should get juve products. But if they're looking for things, what should they look out for? What should they be looking to avoid? Yeah, I would avoid a couple things. I would really avoid companies promoting like the, when they promote, let's say, medical claims, because a lot of companies, they're trying to follow our route of being a legitimate medical product and simply stating it doesn't mean you're a medical product. So I would always look at the company to show validation for that. So one one tricky thing we've seen in the industry is folks saying, hey, we've been through you know safety testing and medical testing. But then when you ask, and they'll show like a safety mark. But if you look up that safety mark, it'll show it's safe for horticulture use. So like plant use, um, it's a gr- like a grow light. So it's very tricky, um, which is why we're pretty transparent with all of that. We have uh, lots of articles on our website of things to, to really look out for. And uh, I believe it's um, misleading marketing claims in the red light therapy industry. And we call a lot of that out with power, wavelengths. Um, safety testing, misleading marks, all of that sort of stuff. Um, so, I mean, even if you're looking for maybe something locally around your area, I would highly encourage you to read you know, read that article on our website because it really points out some of the, the lack of industry enforcement um, in that area. And so we're just a company that chooses to do that ourselves because we believe in providing a really good quality product for folks that when they're investing in it, um, they're getting exactly what, what they're paying for. And do you sell internationally? We do. Yeah, we do ship internationally. And we actually have some uh, some good in, in incentives coming up as Black Friday is a typically a really big time of year. So if any is, is looking at or for the holidays, we will have some great promos um, coming up here in the next uh, month or two. And something that I can't get out of my head, I, I lived in Amsterdam for a while, and obviously they're famous for their red light district. So. <laughs> that's true that and a lot of people talk about that sound that that song roxanne they where they where they mentioned a lot of the red light in there yeah so changing the subject was is is there a book you can think of that's really moved you for any reason yeah there was one i'll mention two yeah, I'm, actually i'll mention three that, that really changed my outlook on some things one of them would be he dr sashin panda is his name and it's called circadian codes i'm not sure if you've ever heard of it, Tony, but it's a really great book just to see that how circadian works and how it affects our biology and that timing matters. And one of, one of the analogies in that book is really cool. Of your stomach's not just a dumpster to shove stuff down every, every uh, moment of the day. You, know, you need to train, almost train the stomach as, hey, these are the times we eat. You can expect that. And when your body expects it, it starts preparing the right acids, the right enzymes to break that food down. So just different stuff like that. I, they don't teach you that in school. I don't know how much they teach now about circadian rhythm, but um, it's fairly new in, in, in the health industry. So that that was a really exciting book to read. The other one was, I think it's called Why We Sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker. It's an incredible book. It'll like, I don't know, it makes you fall in love with sleep when you read it. Uh, it's maybe one of the best books you can read about sleep. And he's also been on several big podcasts like Joe Rogan and different stuff where he's just a great, he's got a great you know, voice ex- of explaining stuff. Um, so I'm sure his audio book is good, but I really enjoyed reading his book. Um, it was really cool to learn that much about sleep 
and why we sleep. And it just explains it in a really simple, digestible way that's not too complicated. Um, and then the last one was really cool. Uh, it's called Pain Free. Um, and it's a book by Pete Egoscu. And it's something I personally struggled with for several years was just, I had just chronic pain. Um, so I had a chronic shoulder pain, chronic lower back pain. And I realized for myself, like it was structural problems. Um, my body wasn't aligned lined right. And so what Egoscu, the book calls out, is really teaching you about postural alignment. You know, I went to chiropractors. I tried tons of stuff. I tried different stretches, everything. And it wasn't until I could actually look at my body and especially from all sides of so the front of it, the side of it, the back of it and see, hey, you're, you're tilted forward and, and all of your upper body, uh, your back is like holding all of that. And so that's where, you know, that's why your pain is coming as your lower back. And that's what the shoulder, it's like all interconnected. Um, there's lots of great routines you can learn from that book. And, and Pete actually, uh, I mentioned the San Francisco 49ers, the NFL team that we work with, they actually incorporated his method. Um, and they have a specialist there that is, is working these players through postural alignment. Um, so it's pretty cool. It, it's a, it's something that I've adopted and on a, on a daily basis. So those are three, three really cool books. So circadian rhythm, sleep, and then a book about posture. And it's really cool because I feel like it goes hand in hand really with what juve is like, just putting your body in the position of how it was designed to be, it's amazing how much that can do for your health. You know, and light's a big part of it because um, there's months you're going to go through and you, everyone knows this in the UK, there's months you go through where the sun's just not there. And so can you supplement with something else that can provide, you know, that, that energy to your body? And thankfully there is. And same with just putting your body in the right posture of alignment. It can function as it's intended because when you're in pain, it's your body signaling to you something's wrong you know and now we're taught so much like a pain medicine do this do that put a brace on it but no no and that goes into me saying at the beginning of the podcast self-discovery it's going to take you caring about that pain and you diving in because if you go to a specialist or anybody they're just going to listen to what you're telling them so the more you can learn about you the healthier you can become and when you talked about the i mean you know, we're quite far north here in the Northern Hemisphere and it's starting to get darker earlier and earlier. And I lived in the Arctic Circle for a while in the north of Norway and for there's times there where it's 23 hours of darkness during the winter. So some of those northern Scandinavian countries and Canada and so on, they, I guess they could really benefit from things like this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have, a, we have an article on our site now where we go into a little bit of that research for like seasonal affective disorder um, and how near infrared is showing a lot of promise to help boosting mood, et cetera, when it comes to light. I mean, all in all, when you read, if you read any of those books that I mentioned, we are very sensitive to light and um, our body is very sensitive to it. We react to it you know, in, in a very, can be positive, but also negative way, right? If you're exposing yourself to the wrong light at night, it's really going to jack up your sleep. Um, but if you expose yourself to the right type of light, especially in the morning, can really give you, it can really wake you up. It can activate hormones like cortisol to, to kickstart the day of what you need to feel awake. So I like to say, like, when, if you can, if you can start wielding light for your benefit, um, I think it can have a major impact um, on your health. So if people want to find out more about you, where would they go? Our website, com, And if you go there, I encourage you to not go look at the products. I would go to our science page. We have a great video that that gives you just an overview on how light impacts the body, specifically red and near infrared and, and your cells. And then I would I'd look at uh, the various articles. We have a ton of articles on what red and near infrared can do as far from, from a benefit standpoint, how it works. So I would just encourage you to start there. And then the next section I would potentially go to is the review. Go Just go read what people are saying. Um, how it's impacting their life, how they're incorporating it in, in, into their life, their daily routine, et cetera. And then if you're more curious after that, definitely feel free to go look at the products. But I just encourage you to j just do more reading. Don't be a skeptic like I was where I kind of thought this was a joke. Just, just see what it can do. And there's ways you can even start implementing better light habits in your, into your own life, even from this podcast. Like start mitigating bright light as soon as the sun goes down. Just use it, it maybe low Calvin incandescent bulbs or start using a salt lamp or, or you can get some, you know, some red light bulbs from your local hardware store. Um, start seeing the sun first thing in the morning, um, getting out regular into the sun throughout the day. So there's lots of things you can do to start benefiting from, from implementing 
healthy light habits and, and then implementing a red light panel like Juve takes it to the next level. But there's lots of places you can start. And can people only buy products direct from Juve or can you can they get them from, say, like Amazon and so on? So we yeah, we just sell directly to the consumer. Juve.com is the only place you can currently buy our products. And just before we finish, Wes, is there a quotation you can think of that really resonates with you? Yeah, uh, there's a cool quote. I can't, I think it's by, it might be by Les Brown. Uh, he's a no uh, motivational speaker. I, I can't remember the exact of it, but people will get the gist of it, that, that if you fall down and you can look up, you can get up. And so I think that's just a cool quote to hear because life's very fluid and there's ups and downs and you're not always going to be up, uh, but you're not always going to be down either. And the only reason you know there's ups and downs is because, you know, you're going through them. And if it was good all the time, nobody would, you know, what bad was. Um, so, yeah, if you can, if you fall down, if you can look up, you can get up. Wes, I really appreciate your time and for educating us on what red light therapy is and what to look out for as well. So thank you. Thanks, Tony. I really enjoyed the chat. Join me next week on The Art of Living Proactively for a fascinating glimpse into the world of Qigong. I'll be speaking with Andrew Kenneth Freckwell, an expert Qigong and Tai Chi instructor based in Bali, to unpack the secrets of this ancient Chinese practice. Andrew will reveal how harnessing your qing or your qi or life force energy is key to living a long and vital life. We'll dive deep into time-tested Taoist techniques like bone breathing and special meditations that strengthen your organs and awaken your spiritual essence. You'll learn the difference between Qigong and Tai Chi and why starting with Qigong sets you on the fast track to well-being. Plus, Andrew will share his insights on overcoming emotional blocks, balancing hormones and achieving enlightenment. It's an info-packed and inspirational episode you won't want to miss. So be sure to hit subscribe, leave us a review and share this episode with friends. Join me next week for a proactive perspective on harnessing your energy and realizing your potential with Andrew Kenneth Bedwell.